Kia ora, hola, hello. Uh, smile or raise your hand if you complete some projects that you start. Cool, honest people. If you complete every project you start, one person in the back, you're either lying to me or I really want to meet you later. Let's talk. <laughs> raise your hand or smile if you have no idea what completing a project means. Cool, cool. Thank you, folks. Bit of an icebreaker. I realize it's 4 p.m. and we probably want to get to eating some nice treats soon. So, welcome to our talk. Um, before we get started, I'm hopefully going to convince you to show me your passions in what is a rather philosophical talk. Uh, a lot has changed since I applied uh, for this talk last year. So, I'm hoping that the restructure of the way I'm approaching this is going to be a bit better. I'm going to talk a bit about my background, who I am, even though Josh already introduced me, so that'll save me a bit of time. Um, some of the things uh, I've stumbled upon are sort of the realizations that I've uh, found about what makes me passionate, and hopefully we'll get a bit of interaction before the talk ends. And then, yeah, we'll be on our way to having a nice evening. Who am I? I'm currently a strategist looking for a fighter and a mage and a bard, so <laughs> hit me up. <laughs> Um, also, I was been looking for a way out of this talk for the whole day, but I'm doing it, so let's get into it. Oh, cool, we have notes here. Uh, I come from Panama, which is a really, really tiny country, like half of the North Island. It's, it's in Central America and the Northern American continent, so let's make things complicated already. I moved to Aotearoa in 2015. Uh, recently, I became a resident, so I'm like really stoked about that, that I can be here. And yeah, woo! <laughs> Felt great. Um, and yeah, uh, I have a few things that I'm passionate about. As, um, most recently, I, I discovered a um, passion or addiction for cycling. Um, I really like birds. That's a photo of a co there. there. Um, you can see I have it on my t-shirt. <laughs> We're my company, shares this, you know. <laughs> uh, I do like a bit of writing as well. It's just something I added because I've always sort of enjoyed journaling and I've been back into it recently. Um, it's sort of one of those things that you like, leave in the back and then find later. I work at ShareSys, which is uh, basically a company, well, startup, not turn into like a bigger startup that we offer an investment platform where you can invest in companies and funds and things. If you don't know what that means, it's just stonks. Um, <laughs> sometimes you'll get <laughs> not stonks, but usually it's stonks of some kind. Um, that's everything. We're not as bad as Robin Hood, hopefully. Um, I used to work at Pegpock. And there I was a game programmer and then I transitioned into what is a game analytics developer, which I kind of call like a full stack, a full stack sort of uh, data engineer. We just look at numbers, um, number go up and down. I worked at I Am Monster, which is a game where you sort of control this like Godzilla looking, um, you know, big uh, monkeys and giant plants, yetis and everything. You stomp over cities, quite cute, quite fun. And also Cluster Dog, which uh, it's a game that came out of a game jam, and surprisingly, we won an award um, for having a really quirky game. Um, maybe you can attribute it to my passion to birds and the whole team's talent, of course. <laughs> but um, let's get into what makes me and you passionate. As I said, this talk is a bit philosophical, so I don't want to tell you what a passion means because it's something that we'll get to discover and we'll explore together. Let's start with a bit of a story. I've always enjoyed working on the UX part of games. Well, not UX, I, I'm gonna say the game feel part of it, you know, making the things shiny, and I don't really care much about the gameplay or like the AI, don't, don't give it to me, like give me the UI stuff, give me the stuff that I can just make it, this bottom bounce or things, and I'll find a way to make the, the code sort of do that. I've always really enjoyed that, and I've always sort of toyed with projects, as you can see in this screen, the four different projects from game jams or just things that I've been working on um, in the past and sort of get to explore ideas and see if something works and I can use it in other games. So our passions may be niche ideas. In this case, the niche idea being that game feel sort of part of games and making things a bit more extra, because I'm a bit extra, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Let's keep exploring. This photo here is a picture that means a lot to me. It's one of the game jams that I've managed to uh, organize back home in Panama. Uh, we call it the Panama Game Jam, very originally so. And this was the, the fourth one that we organized. And this began from me doing my first ever game jam here in New Zealand at uh, Media Design School, which is the university I went to. 
um, after doing this event, I was like really just amazed at how cool game jams were. So I said, hey, why don't we have this back home? So we made a draft project. We said, well, a game jam is just you know, an event where you make a game in sort of like a weekend and you get a topic and you make whatever you want. A digital game, a board game, it's completely up to you. Um, little did we know that we put this um, blog post online and people were interested. We um, obtained full sponsorship for the event, including the venue, uh, free food, everything you can think of. And it just came from some, someone seeing it and they, I think they could have probably, like they saw the passion that we had for this event and how badly we wanted to do it. So the Panama Game Jam was born as a thing. A sort of a collective that we ran events, but then we quickly ran into like also doing a bit of workshops and teaching people what games are all about from a non-coders perspective. You know, you have actually like programmer who like makes games and, but it's like, hey, we have artists and you can be like a musician too. Like, whoa, you can also write stuff for games? No way. Panama Game Jam 16 was the first one that we did. Um, thanks to a friend who made this really cool image and also sits at the back of my business cards, which I don't have, sorry. But the thing was on, it was a reality. So then I realized at the time, which is 2016, that I'm passionate about community in the sense that we are running an event that involves people, that involves creating a community. I'm also passionate about games, well, I hope, hope so, because we were making a game jam and making things. I am a programmer by profession. I've always liked coding, but I've realized that coding is just not my passion and in itself. Like I love coding, but making things is what I'm really into. Coding is sort of like a tool, a means to get the thing done. Here are some of the photos of the game jams that we have also organized. We've done a few local chapters for the Global Game Jam, so shout out the ones who do here in, uh, in Auckland, Wellington, New Zealand, and every other city that has Global Game Jams in New Zealand. Really cool events that you should go to if you haven't been to yet. Our passions then, things you like doing. I like organizing events, even though it's a bit of a pain, and you would all know, well, people who are organizing this event know that it's a pain. Um, I like games and I like community. Am I passionate about those things? Am I passionate about perhaps the fact that I need to liaise sponsors or find people to help me create these things? It's something that you might ponder about. Here's another story that I want to share with you. It's called Game Development in Espanol, and it's basically a Twitter bot that I created from finding the idea of, I want to create a community for people to share the content uh, in a way that sort of caters to game developers who speak Hispanic languages, well, in this case, Spanish. So I said to myself, cool, I'm passionate about community, I'm passionate about games and making things. What can I do to get this thing done? Um, I went online, you know, looked about perhaps Discord servers or Facebook groups, but I said, as much as I love community and, you know, I know the work that is uh, required for community management, I do not have the time, let's find something else. I stumbled upon Twitter bots, a very simple thing if you don't know what they are. It's a Twitter account where you basically tell it to um, do stuff um, controlled by software. So the software can say, hey, retweet this thing every, th every time you find a specific hashtag or whatever you want. Say, cool, hey, that sounds like a great idea. I'm going to start making a bot. So I went, I did what every programmer does, went to Google. How do I make a bot? Luckily for me, there's a lot of content online. So I found the first two tutorials and I went at it. It took me like a few days, well, in a few weeks, talking with Twitter and me explaining to them, hey, I really don't want to spam your platform. It's not one of those bots. Like, I just want to share content for game developers in Spanish. Simple as that. Nowadays, the bot sits at about 1,600 people. Uh, I haven't done any work on it other than like releasing it and saying, hey, yes, this is a thing, find it. And the coolest thing of this bot is that I get to see the notifications and people are actually talking with each other, giving themselves compliments, getting ideas, and saying, hey, let's collaborate together. And that's so freaking cool for me because that's exactly what I wanted this bot to do. Even if it's just a really simple idea, it's like this is just a piece of software that you know, gets a hashtag perhaps, hashtag game dev, and it goes, hey, here's it in Spanish, cool, I'm gonna retweet it, that's it. Very simple, but it did what I wanted it to do at the time. So I said, hey, my passions in this case helped me sort of get and transmit the thing that I really wanted to get across. And that's when I realized, well, our passions, personal projects. A lot of us, and I'm sure here in, in the game development industry, we, we are very passionate about our games, we are very passionate about the things we do, therefore, we make personal projects for our games. 
Now, I want to explore something very cool. Well, in my mind, <laughs> it is placed nicely, so bear with me. But let's get into a bit of a thinking state. I'm quite proud of this slide, by the way. It took me a bit to find the emojis. Um, so <laughs> thank you for appreciating that, the ones who do. If you don't, that's fine. Um, I want you to think about something that makes you passionate. And just think of one thing. If you can summarize it into perhaps two, three words, then do it. If, if you cannot, then just find this thing that you're really passionate about and keep it in your mind, okay? I'll give you a, a bit of time to think through it because it's going to get a bit interactive. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to put you in the spot. And this is how I say, I'm going to convince you to show me your passions by making you all show it to each other. We're going to begin with, well, the thinking. Hopefully you have something in your mind now. If you don't, then this is the time to do it. I'm going to do what's called a Juan thing. Ha <laughs> 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 ha! I did it. <laughs> and once you have this Juan thing in your mind, get ready. We're going to do a really simple exercise that you will notice has bigger effects than you know. Let's get interactive. All right, first thing we're going to do, and I'm, I will run you through this, and then I'll sort of put you on the spot, and hopefully I'll hear a bit, a, a bit of humming in the background, meaning you're talking with each other or, or not. If, if you don't want to, that's okay, too. The first step for me of showing a passion to someone else is just talking about it. I asked on Twitter a few weeks ago what you're passionate about. Some people said, I like to learn oil painting while drinking tea or listening to podcasts on themes of games, art, and mental health. Awesome. I can already follow up on so many questions. What podcasts are you listening to? What kind of music are you listening to? Are you doing it all at once? Like, you know, are you doing like death metal, like painting beautiful oils? Tragically, or I would say happily, my passion is food, because hell yeah, me too. <laughs> that food looks delicious. I'm really hungry right now. I want some sweets. <laughs> I'm notably enthusiastic about backflips. If you work at Pegpog, you definitely know who this person is. Um, oh, whoops, sorry. Um, and this is when I'm going to turn to you, and the person who's next to you, whoever's in your vicinity, I'm going to give you about 10 seconds to share with them what you're really passionate about. And either in these two or three words, or whatever you can, just do it, OK? Are you ready? Cool, all right, I'm going to to, I'm gonna count to one from three. Two, one, and go. And this is awesome, because as much as I would like you to, to continue doing it, I got to somehow follow up. <laughs> the cool thing was how everyone, well, most people who were talking about this, just you had big smiles on your face. Your, your, your face, you, you were lit, recently, like, hashtag lit, you know, like, <laughs> doot, doot, you know. Really cool seeing you all talk about your passions. You, you wanted to keep going. And that's great. Keep that energy. The second step, or the second thing that I would do in this case would be, do you have something to show? Is there anything you'd like to show? And in this case, um, because of time and things, I'm going to sort of run you through what I mean with this and how it sort of came to be the inspiration for the theme of this, the theme of this talk. Um, at Peg Park, and well, I share this too, we have um, Friday nights where we do like show and tell us and you'll just display whatever you're working on, whether it's a personal project, something that's related to work. And I used to run this team. Well, be, uh, I was a part of the people who were running this. Not surprisingly, um, Jake, uh, Josh, and Rick are also on that team. You know, very loud people like me. I'm a bit less loud, but you know, 
we, we're there. And we would always go to the artists, especially the concept artists, the people who are you know, doing all this awesome stuff and say, hey, do you have anything you would like to show to us? And their screens, like next to them, you will see these beautiful drawings, the beautiful things, but they would say, it's not ready yet. I'm not an artist, I don't, you know, to me that looks beautiful, like I would love to see that as a developer, tell me all about it, Whatever, everything you're doing, like I want, I want to know about it, but they just wouldn't show us the, um, the work in progress stuff, which is fine if, as you were showing things, because some people will want to wait until their, um, their project or whatever they're working on is fully finished, and then you just have that first impression, right? You can lose sort of the aspect of the first impression if you show something beforehand, which I totally understand. But the, uh, the, fact, um, the practice in this case is to just be a bit more um, open to sharing what you're working on before it's um, quote, quote, perfect, because it's not a thing, right? Perfection does not exist. And so a lot of people, has, in this case, artists, well, non-artists, would love to see what you're all up to before it's, it's fully finished. Like, you know, getting to know them, how you get around the meshes, the 3D objects, or the concepts. We all are really, really interested in that. If you show us, we'll also be like a lot more engaged in your work and respect it a lot more and understand it a little more. Because usually developers, you know, will be like, hey, I'm coding this. How, how does art play a part in this? If we get to interact more with each other and our teams, we'll be mindful of who is working on what and what it involves. Um, I really like a bit of um, Oscar Stahlberg's work. Um, I'm butchering his name, but that's an odd A there. Um, he made a really, really cool game about just making houses or like sort of like procedural generation thing that just makes houses. Uh, this is some of the work in progress photos that he had and just, as you can see, it's just a bunch of lines and things that are procedurally generating in a GIF that I couldn't download because I'm, I don't know, Twitter wouldn't let me. Um, here's a second version of the tweet, though, where you can see um, from left to the right, it's taking shape. Now houses are developing themselves, in, but it's a really complicated algorithm that he'd be more than happy to share with you about. The third image is just the process of that. And it's the same idea of showing your work in its early stages, getting people to either collaborate with you, give you tips, or ask you, hey, how are you actually doing this? Especially in the um, the procedural generation space. A lot of people are just really, really curious into how are you getting things done. Whether it is on the art side, you know, um, Houdini or whatever, or you're doing programming stuff with really complicated numbers, people will be really interested. And this is the cool thing about being so passionate about things like procedural generation. People are just gonna want to talk to you and get, you know, ideas off you. The last thing in this case is once you have talked about your passion, once you have shown something, if you have to, or if you want to, then there's a step of like sort of the CTA, the call to action. How do we learn more? How can we follow up on what you're doing? Do you need support? Are you looking for people to join, join a team or sort of get your feedback? Okay. Um, that's the cool thing of passion. When you communicate what you really like, it's just gonna happen naturally. And these are some of the tools that you can utilize to make sure that you're doing it in sort of not the right way, because that's up to you. It's very personal, but it's gonna ensure you're getting uh, to some point with sort of uh, tools and, and guides to get you to the place where you would like to be. Another thing I really like about passions is that whenever there's passionate people in a crowd like this, it's really a community. Communities can be found everywhere. In this, in this case, we have the NZGDA, who have all, all very awesomely um, produced this event. And you also have ch local chapters for developers in Wellington. We have the Game Developers of Welly. They have the Oakland Game Development Meetup. Game Developers of Christchurch, Dunedin. I've met people from Fangare today, so we have people all over the country, right? Where there's a will, there's a way. And if you want to work further on your passions or meet like-minded people who are as passionate as you are, find the communities wherever it may be safe for you to do so. As Cameron was talking earlier as well, there are plenty of uh, spaces to um, join communities online if that's something you prefer more. And once you share your passions, the outcome is definitely bigger than you know. I've never imagined that I'll be here just talking about this um, in a very philosophical talk, but I find, found that from planning events, making bots, working on random stuff, someone has always come to me and ask, hey, how do you do it? And, and I just talk, as I always do. Thank you very much. Find what makes you passionate. We are very, very keen to learn about it. Love these birds, they are so chunky. <laughs> it's like a round ball and it's like a tiny head. It's one of my favorites.
Anyway. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, before we dive in, I just have this uh, brilliant comment here that I'd love to read out. Um, I'm socially terrified, but having Juan encourage the room to talk about their passions was a huge endorphin boost. Woo. Cool. That's what I wanted. It's fantastic. That it works, actually. It was, uh, in my mind, I was like, is this going to be like real cringy? <laughs> it sounded cringy, right? Like, let's be real. But it, I think it worked, so <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, our first question is, Juan, I'm passionate about making things that people can use, but I really want to give myself permission to make things just for the sake of it sometimes. How do I make space for that? Thank you for asking that, whoever it was. The reason why I found bird watching to be one of the things I really like is because there's no goal to bird watching. People ask me, hey, but what's the goal? I'm like, we're this, I don't need a goal to watch birds. I mean, I can sort of Pokemon style do the thing where, you know, I'll have a checklist and I'll say like, whoa, I found a kid do today, you know. But I find joy in just watching birds go through. And I've combined that with um, cycling and going outdoors. And I've allowed myself to give that space to just enjoy things without needing KPIs, you know, key performance indicators, or to be re real, real like corporate about it. it sometimes it's just, I think it's about stepping back and just finding things that, if you join, just going hard at them. Like, nothing, uh, like, yeah, it doesn't necessarily need a, need a goal. Unless you want to make money, then you probably want to go. But <laughs> go for it. That's my advice. Kia ora, hola, Juan. Uh, when you have so many passions, how do you narrow down what to pursue? I do not know about that. <laughs> um, I was recently reading about scanner type people from a writer whose name I forgot about, but they have a book, and they talk about this specific type of person who is like, you could think it's like an ADHD person, because I fit a lot of the descriptions, but I'm not diagnosed at this yet. But scanner people do a lot of things. I do a lot of stuff. My friends are always like, you have a lot of hobbies, and I say, yeah, I do. Um, definitely keep myself like busy, in, or not bored, I guess. But um, I think just try things, and if, if something feels really like cool to you, just just do it. Like, it's something I'm still discovering. So if you, any if anyone else has um, tips and tricks, let's talk. Let's collaborate. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Thank you. <laughs> what do you think makes people reluctant to discuss what they're passionate about? How do you encourage them to open up and speak about them? Um, thank you for the question. Uh, I believe there's so many things that. Well, in, 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 in a society of neurodivergent people and many ways of, you know, people from different countries and different languages, um, there's different ways in which you can feel a bit overwhelmed by either where you are or who you're talking to or the space you're at, right? So I think having a, finding a safe space for like-minded folks who share some of your core beliefs is a really good place to find this and just slowly try, just like, you know, you don't have to go fully at it, just Try something that you find us do something really passionate about and just do, do it slowly. It's not going to happen overnight and you will not just be like talking, talking a lot. Because I talk like a parrot, so I definitely understand that everyone's like me. So give it a try, but make it safe, so. And in what ways do you apply passion to your everyday work to stay inspired but not burnt out? Thank you, Josh. Uh, I did experience a bit of burnout when I was working in games. So I don't work in games at the moment, but... <laughs> It's a very intense environment uh, over at finance um, stonks world. But I think something that I find passion, well, how f I find a drive, I think, is um, at the moment I'm really like, I'm, I like my work, but I'm not really like passionate about it because, I mean, finance is not games. But I have a lot of things to look forward to um, during the day, such as people I'm meeting at the office, I'm talking to them. A lot of them are like gamers too, so I say nerds, even though I'm a big nerd myself. Um, we're chatting about this cool stuff. I'm getting to meet them. We're getting to, you know, do good work, have good feedback. If you're a programmer, we'll do a lot of merge requests. And it feels nice to review someone else's code um, and just sort of keep the environment a bit open and easy to share your ideas, share who you are as a person. Because let's be honest, if you're working, working somewhere with other people, you want to show who you are. You're not just robots. Unless you are, then maybe that person who raised their hand when they said they complete every project. But we're just, everyone else, we're humans. <laughs> What's the weirdest, coolest passion you've come across when asking people about their passions? Oh, a really good question, Josh. Um, I'm going to get back to you with this. Like, I think I've heard something really, really cool, but you just you have to go on YouTube and find out what people are doing. I found birding through 
some really random um, channels and, and ways that I would not imagined. Um, I mean, we have people like Robert Yang who are passionate about really cool stuff, and Carla Duke here who is really passionate about having podcasts and you know meeting people and discovering their passions as well. Um, I believe the, the coolest thing is just when someone shares what they really love with me or others. They're sharing a part of who they are, and I really appreciate that. Passion can be wild, but what if it's too wild and feels really unachievable? Do I continue pursuing it, or do I give up? Oof. It's very real. What do you think, people? <laughs> what do we tell them? <laughs> a lot of it depends, right? Um, your socioeconomical um, position. Can you afford to do the really wild thing, which usually, you know, then we're pandering again to this, a very specific demographic who has access to the opportunities that many other people don't. So um, I think, have a think about it. And if something you really, really, really like, then yeah, just, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to give you advice and then have you blame me for something bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, talk to me though. Let's, let's explore it. Let's explore it. <laughs> um, yeah, th that is actually all we have here. But um, we did have a comment uh, saying that, uh, did you notice that there are actually more birds around you? Looks like kiwi. More kiwi. Yeah. And oh, a tui. <laughs> Love tuis. I, I'm, a, I'm a tui, I think. Um, that was a bird. Um, oh. Oh, oh, I didn't oh. mean this is an invitation to look. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did it. Oh, where is that? Is that a Kia? That's a Kia. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Juan, <laughs> put your hands together. Thank you so much, my man. <laughs>